I hope some of you are eager to see what's inside this tuner because I sure am. Well, it turns out after I've examined it, uh, I will have to take loose a couple of screws up underneath and, and get the entire mechanism loose before I can uh, remove the screws and, and take off this copper cover. So let me tip it up and show you those screws. The screws I'm talking about are the ones that uh, go through this bracket and into the box. Uh, there's one there, one there, one there, and apparently one's missing here if I get that light over there. So I'll have to dig around and come up with a screw for that. Once I get these four, these remaining three screws loose, the entire box will be flopping around and that's when I can remove these side uh, screws on both sides. So let's get them all removed and try to be very, very careful with this thing because if it's wiped out, that's it. We're done. Okay, the three screws are out and now we'll go ahead and remove these and these two here and then I think all we have would be the, this one here and this one here and once done that entire mechanism should either slide out from the bottom or slide forward and come off I'm not sure which we'll have to remove the light bulb for this little deal I'm sure we'll this light bulb just slides on that will also need some work later on by the way so let's get to removing screws and see what we've got last of them. Let's see if this thing is loose at all. I don't see it. Uh, it would probably take two hands. Well, well, well. <laughs> Ask me if we ran into a snafu or not. Yes, we did. I just realized that you cannot remove this outside wall that goes all the way around this enclosure. It's spot welded along the so along the back edge. The screws come out in the front, but it's spot welded here. What you have to do is remove the silver part. But <laughs> you can't remove the silver part until you unsolder all of these wires here. Well, how about that? That looks like that should be fun. But anyway, once we get everything unsoldered here, I should be able to remove this and just slip it right on out. And it has to come out. You can't ignore this. I don't know what's down inside there. I kind of took a peek and it looks like there might be a burnt resistor. We already have one burnt resistor right here, as you can see. There's half of it and the other half of it's kind of hiding down here on the other side of this uh, capacitor. So the chances are there may be another one in there and there may be a capacitor in there. This is a restoration. We must open this box. We have no choice. If I didn't open the box, there'd be no sense in working on any of the rest of the TV. This thing has to be eyeballed. Oh well, now it's time to record. Uh, take a piece of paper, write down what wire goes where, carefully unsolder everything from that terminal, kind of bend all the wires back, and then hopefully the whole thing will just lift right out. When it does, we'll all get to see it. Oh, wonderful news. Before we start unsoldering things, let's take a little closer look here. Come to find out, it looks like I've got another burnt resistor right there. Also, this resistor that's been burned is a replacement. That thing is not an original soldering joint, and that is not an original soldering joint. Someone put that in there. It may have been underrated, I don't know. But this entire set of mess here is going to have to be replaced to include the capacitors and everything. This disk capacitor, this one, this resistor, that resistor, and maybe even this disk capacitor here too. I don't know. But this whole mess here is just maybe an indication of what we're going to find on the inside. I hope it's not too bad. Let's talk about capacitors for a moment. A while back I worked on a Spartan Model 67 Tombstone Radio. And that thing was filled with what I consider to be dual capacitors. They weren't labeled as such, but they that's what they were. What they did was they brought a lead in to a capacitor, and then they came out here, added another capacitor with another lead, and in the center 
they grounded them both. Now the way what this looked like inside the chassis was a long standard capacitor just like you would see wax capacitor with the lead going out of each end and right here they had the band a metal band that came up and then they riveted it to the chassis. Well at first glance that just looks like a capacitor being held by a metal band when in fact what it was was this right here two capacitors with the center grounded. I didn't realize that at first because I was just starting working on these things and, and, I, and I kept looking on the schematic and seeing two capacitors but when I looked in the chassis I only saw one <clears throat> and I couldn't understand that until finally it dawned on me what was happening. Another way that they, can, that they did this was using disc capacitors. Sometimes you might look in a radio or look in a TV and you'll see a three-legged capacitor well, what is this three-legged capacitor? You know, isn't a capacitor supposed to be like this? Just two legs? You know? However, what they do what they do sometimes with disc capacitors, now I say disc, imagine two pennies being uh, put together, you know, side by side, like that. Like so. And one lead comes out from one end, one lead comes out from the other, and then in the center, they ground the two together. Two discs, two round discs, one on top of another, with the wire coming out of the center on each side. Okay, let's take a look at one of those uh, three-legged disc capacitors right here. There's one leg coming out of this thing. There's another leg coming out of it. This is the ground leg, by the way, in the center. <clears throat> this is the other leg. And the third leg is right there. I don't know if you can see that or not, right there. One leg, two legs, three legs. And if my camera was good enough, you'd see that this is a double layer, just like two pennies being placed together. One leg, two legs, three legs. Just be aware of it. The tuner is out. Finally, after unsoldering and making a big old mess over here, I finally got everything disconnected. And this little uh, shield had to be removed, so you had to like press down and, and release it from up underneath this catch right here. And then we can go ahead and open it up, and I guarantee you, once I get inside this, if you have to do the same thing, it's not for the squeamish. <coughs> All right, the cover's removed. And as I expected, as I thought, right down in here, see that burnt resistor right there with that white stripe right there? A burnt resistor. That is a R15. It's a 1000 ohm resistor, 1K, and it's called the RF decoupling resistor. I knew there was a burnt resistor in there, and you see why you have to get inside these things. You may not want to, and boy, I tell you what, it'll make you it'll make you buggy thinking about it. But you know, you just gotta bite the bullet, and make it happen. That's all there's to it. If you're gonna restore something, restore it, which means you gotta look at everything. Now, how did I know that's R15, and how did I know that it's 1K, and how did I know that it's an RF decoupling resistor? Hmm. Well, it's not because I'm a genius. On the uh, photo fact, it tells me right here, R15, let me see, R15 has an arrow to point down right there. There's that resistor right there, R15. And if I look in the parts list, I see that R15 is listed up here, and it tells me what I need to know right there. 1K, then you read over to the right, it's a half watt resistor. It reads over, tells me it's an RF amp decoupling resistor. And it is located on the schizo. Let me get this thing righteous so you can see it here. It's located on the schematic right here. Right there. What happened here was this capacitor, this uh, 1500 micro microfarad uh, capacitor, has shorted to ground. And when it did, it took that resistor right out there with it, just fried it. What I was concerned mostly with is not the resistor. I'm concerned that one end of that resistor is connected to that wafer switch in there. 
And the question was, did it take out the wafer switch pin with it? Fortunately, right now it looks like the answer is no. So the next step is to go ahead and clean this thing as much as possible. It's just nothing but a bunch of uh, wafer switches, no big deal. We've seen these things a thousand times. They're down in there and they're just standard old wafer switches. Cleaned, you know, cleaned them a thousand times, been there, done that. Anybody who's repaired the radios had to do this at one time or another. We'll just give it a real good cleaning, but I have to be careful. All these little coils you see here, all these uh, nifty little coils down in there. I don't know what the coating is on those coils. They're everywhere. Uh, they determine frequency for tuning uh, in, in conjunction with capacitors. And there's even an adjustable capacitor down there, a little mica uh, adjustable capa capacitor. I don't want to do anything that might take off the finish on any of these things. It might cause a problem. So I'll be cleaning it with uh, spray cleaner. And my mentor, uh, Brendan, has already warned me, do not use a spray cleaner that has oil in it. Also use strictly a cleaner and just flood and flood and flood. I'm going to start out cleaning this uh, tuner by just hitting it with some canned air. I could get out my big old air compressor and blast away, but I don't think that would be wise. Uh, probably canned air is about all the pressure you really want. So let's go ahead and just blow out the dust. It's going to take a while, you know. Just take your time. Get it on both sides of the wafer switches. Give it a good blowout. I'll do the same thing to the other side. I put the knob on the end of the sh uh, channel changing shaft here. And now I'm going to go ahead and just take this uh, cleaner and just give it a spray just like you would any other switch. Then, of course, move the... Uh, this will be a two-hand operation, actually. I need to be spraying with one hand while I'm turning this with the other. But we're going to clean each one of these little contacts on both sides of these wafer switches, just like we've done in the past. Nothing new there. Just go ahead and give it all the way around on both sides. That's all she wrote on the tuner. I went ahead and flooded it, used almost an entire can of contact cleaner while I spun the dial. You know, you got you got to do that as you're spraying. And then I took a, a long, uncut acid brush or flux brush whichever you want to call it and I dipped it in 91% alcohol and I used it to clean the hardware the brackets and things like that to get all the crud off it was a little bit of a process but you know and I probably didn't get every little bit of it so I may work on it a little bit more after it thoroughly dries and it looks really good at the very end here is a uh, one of the switches that I cleaned with the spray and then rotated it looks very nice very clean uh, one other thing I want to point out here uh, just like in FM radios these little coils right here are set at a certain height and a certain width apart don't disturb these little copper coils you see in a TV tuner or an FM radio for that matter you'll see some more down in here just stay away from those things because all those, come on baby, get over there. Okay, all those little coils you see right down in there. Anywhere you see those coils. They're, they're split apart and set at a certain height. And uh, if you mess them up, there goes your frequencies. And if your frequencies go, you can't tune the TV in. And you can't tune your FM radios in. Be very careful with curled coils. That's about it. I think we'll go ahead and call this uh, video a wrap. It may be longer than what I anticipated. I don't know. I haven't put it all together in my editing program yet. But next time, we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to change out that burnt resistor that's in there, R15. And then we'll try to maybe do something with the top of this thing. I don't know what. I've already cleaned the tube sockets. They're nice and clean. I may leave this just like this. I'm not sure. Or I may just say, you know, what the heck, let's just go for it and get it all nice and clean and make it look a lot better than it is. Uh, until next time, this is John.